Welcome to week seven of English 101. We've made our way through several of the uh, parts of speech thus far in our study of English 101. And this week we're going to turn our attention to another of those parts of speech. This week we're going to give our attention to adverbs. Before we actually begin looking at adverbs, let's take just a moment to review a couple of things about adjectives, because sometimes adjectives and adverbs are easily confused and uh, difficult to identify. Last week, we learned that adjectives modify, limit, or describe nouns and pronouns. Adjectives answer one of five questions. Which one, what kind, how many, how much, and whose? We looked at uh, the subject of the word dog, which is a noun. And we gave a list of certain adjectives. That dog, snarling dog eight pound dog. All of these words in these three columns are adjectives describing the noun dog. They answer one of those questions, which one, what kind, how many, how much, and whose. Adverbs are also modifiers. An adverb is a word that modifies either verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Remember, adjectives modify nouns and pronouns. Adverbs modify verbs, run quickly, or they modify adjectives, often happy, or they modify other adverbs, too quickly. Quickly, modifying the word run is an adverb modifying a verb. As we look at often happy, happy is the adjective modified by often, an adverb, and the adverb quickly is modified by another adverb too. So again, adverbs answer the following questions. Where, how, how often, when, or to what extent? Let's just look at a few examples. Where, the adv adverb would, could be nearby. How. The adverb could be quickly or unexpectedly. When. Possible adverbs are early or yesterday. To what extent? A possible adverb could be seriously. How often? Perhaps the adverb quite regularly could modify. Now, when we begin looking and comparing adverbs and adjectives, let's remember a couple of very important things that will help us to determine if a word in a sentence is an adjective or an adverb. Remember, adjectives modify nouns and pronouns. Adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So what we have to ask when we're striving to determine if a word is an adjective or an adverb, we have to ask the question, which word in the sentence is being described? When we identify the word that is being described, then we can determine if it's an adjective, adjectives modify nouns and pronouns, or if it's an adverb. An adverb modifies verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. 
the word not or its contraction in apostrophe T is a frequently used adverb, but oftentimes is not recognized as an adverb. Did not stay, had not been, didn't care, wasn't asked, wouldn't go. Not, not, in apostrophe T, these are adverbs. Did not stay. It's modifying did stay, and it's placed right between those two words, did not stay. So it is an adverb modifying that verb. I, I have here a, a chart containing adverb comparisons. Just as we saw last week in our study of adjectives, Adverbs also have comparisons. Positive, there is no comparison. Comparative, there is a comparison, comparing two things. And superlative, just as with adjectives, compares three or more things. Now, let's just look down the list on the far left column. No comparison. Loudly. He spoke loudly. Loudly would actually modify the verb spoke. How did he speak? He spoke loudly. She whispered softly. The dog ran quickly. The little boy ran quietly. Now, if we want to compare two things, if we're going to compare two people speaking. We might say Bob spoke more loudly than Tom, or Susie walked more softly than Timmy. The dog ran more quickly than the cat. We're comparing two things, so we would add the word more. If we're comparing three or more things, we would add the word most. Out of the three boys, Tom spoke the most loudly. Out of all the people in the concert, the young lady sang the most eloquently. So if we're comparing two things, we're going to add the word more to the adverb. If we're comparing three or more things, we're going to add the most to the word loudly or softly to the adverb. Now, of course, there are a few adverbs that are regular in form. And again, these cause a great deal of confusion. Let's look at the word well. I am not feeling well today. If we're just talking about one thing or one person, we just use the word well. If we're comparing two things, then we would use the word better. Tom is a better batter than John. We're comparing Tom and John, and Tom is the better of the two. If we're going to compare three or more things, then we would add the words, the best. Well, better, best. And you can see the others here in this list of irregular adverbs, much, more, or the most. Badly, worse, the worst. Little, less, the least. Far, farther or further and the farthest or the furthest. So these are just a few of the irregular adverbs. We learned last week there are certain absolute concepts that are used as adjectives. Those words were perfect, square, essential, dead, unique. Well, 
some adverbs are absolute as well. You either have the quality or you don't have the quality. You can't add to it or take away from it. So there's no comparative or superlative uh, forms for adverbs such as perfectly, squarely, essentially, deadly, uniquely. These are all adjectives that we've simply added the, word, the, the letters L-Y to the end. Others, as we saw last week with adjectives, absolute is an adjective, absolutely is an adverb. And you can see the rest of them in the block at the bottom of the screen. These are absolute concepts that we use for adverb comparisons, even though these are not comparing anything because these are absolute concepts or qualities. Now going on with our discussion of adverbs, we need to avoid a couple of things. We need to avoid the double comparison, and we also need to avoid the double negative. First of all, the double comparison. This lane flies more faster than that one. Now, in that sentence, more faster is a double comparison, so we would just simply strike the word more. This lane, this lane flies faster than that one. In the second example, he lives most farthest from school. Again, that's a double comparison. The word most and the word farthest are comparisons, so we would just strike the word most. He lives farthest from the school. And then also, we need to avoid the double negative. They don't see none to fit them. We would strike the word none because the word don't and the word none are both negatives. So we would say they don't see any to fit them. And the second example, we cannot scarcely see through the fog. The word scarcely is a negative connotation in a sentence. So we would strike not. We can scarcely see through the fog. We would not say we cannot scarcely. We would simply say we can scarcely see through the fog. Conjunctive adverbs are adverbs that show relationships. So on the left column here, we have relationships, and then we have a sampling of words that can be used to show those relationships. For instance, if we're going to use an adverb to show addition, some of the words that might be used are also, furthermore, moreover, besides. If we're going to use an adverb to show contrast, some of the adverbial forms we could use are however, still, nevertheless, conversely, nonetheless, instead, otherwise. If we're going to use an adverb to show comparison, some possible words are similarly or likewise. If we're going to use an adverb to show result or summary, some of the words that might be used are therefore, thus, consequently, accordingly, hence, then. If we're going to show time, use an adverb to denote time. We could use words like next or then, meanwhile, finally, subsequently. Or if we're going to use an adverb to show emphasis, we could use words such as indeed or certainly. So conjunctive adverbs show relationships between the adverb and the word that they are modifying. We're going to use adjectives to modify nouns or pronouns, and we're going to use adverbs to modify verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. Now let's think about the two words good and well. Good is an adjective. Well is an adverb. On a hot day, water tastes good. On a hot day, water 
tastes good. I think Grandpa is completely well. I feel very well today. All is well. It is just as well. Now look on the other column. Sonia had done well on the CPA exam. Charles did well on his first sermon. He sings well, she plays well, she relates well to others. Now, on the adjective side, I think Grandpa is completely well. The word there is used as an adjective because, as you see down at the bottom in the block, always use the word good as an adjective. Well is an adverb when it modifies a verb, but well is an adjective when it means healthy, satisfactory, or fortunate. So, I think Grandpa is completely well since it is describing health, then we would use the word well, not the word good. We would not say, I think grandpa is completely good. Now, if we're saying grandpa is a good man, yes. If he is good morally, yes. But in this sentence, we're talking about grandpa being completely well. I feel well today. Again, that's denoting health. All is well. Everything is satisfactory. It is just as well. It denotes being fortunate. So all of those are adjectives. Well is an adjective when it means healthy, satisfactory, or fortunate. But then on the right-hand column, use adverbs to modify verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. Well is now used as an adverb. Sonia had done well on the CPA exam. Sonia had done well. The word well is modifying the verb had done. Charles did well on his first sermon. The word well is modifying the verb did. So well is an adverb. He sings well. Well is modifying the verb. She plays well. Well is modifying the verb. She relates well to others. Well is modifying the verb. So good and well are sometimes confusing, and the way you determine if it's an adjective or an adverb is by trying to determine which word in the sentence that word is modifying. Always use the word good as an adjective. Well is an adverb when it modifies a verb. Well is an adjective when it means healthy, satisfactory, or fortunate. What about the words bad and badly? Our team is bad. Our team played badly. In the first example, our team is bad. Bad is describing team. So since it is describing team, it's an adjective. In the other example, our team played badly. Badly is describing how the team played. It's modifying the verb, so we use the adverb badly. We have a bad team. Bad here is describing team, so it's an adjective. The odor smells bad. Now, in this example, odor doesn't have the capacity to smell, so we're talking about the aroma of that odor. So, bad in this sentence is being identified with odor. The odor is bad. So, bad in this sentence is an adjective. He was in a bad accident. Again, bad is modifying the noun accident. So, it's an adjective. I feel bad. Feel is a linking verb. 
linking I with bad. So again, bad is an adjective. On the other side, I need a new coat badly. Badly here is how I need a coat. I need badly. The soloist sang badly. Badly here is telling us how she sang, so it's modifying the verb. I swim badly. Badly is telling how I swim, so it's an adverb modifying the verb. He drives badly. Again, badly is modifying the verb. Good and bad are adjectives. They answer the question, what kind? Well and badly are adverbs. They answer the question, how? So again, well and good, bad and badly are sometimes confusing. We just have to determine what word in the sentence is being modified by the word. And when we ask those questions, we can then determine if this is an adjective or an adverb. Again, we use adjectives to modify nouns or pronouns, and we use adverbs to modify verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. He is a logical thinker, and he thinks logically. He is a logical thinker. Logical here is modifying thinkers, telling us what kind of a thinker he is, so that is an adjective. He thinks logically. Logically is telling us how he thinks, so it's modifying the verb. Zane looks happy. Now, in this sentence, looks is a linking verb, and it's showing us how Zane looks. So happy and Zane are identified in this sentence, so happy is an adjective. Zane looks happily at the sunset. In this sentence, happily is telling us how Zane looks at the sunset, so it is an adverb. The detective looked cautious. Cautious is telling us how the detective looked. It's, it's not that he is looking around cautiously, it's that the detective himself is cautious. And in the second example, the detective looked cautiously for fingerprints, is telling us how he looked. The verb looked here is an action word. The verb looked in the first example, the detective looked cautious, is a linking verb. So again, we have to determine how the word is being used and what word in the sentence is being modified. Let's look at these few examples just to get our a better grip on what we're talking about. My cousin was sick last week and he still doesn't seem well or good. Would we use well or good? He doesn't seem well or he doesn't seem good. We're talking about how he seems. Seem here is a linking verb. He seems how? He seems well. He doesn't seem well. So it would be the adjective well. The baby lay in the carriage very contented or contentedly. Again, we need to ask the question, what word in the sentence is being modified, explained in some way? The baby lay in the carriage very, well, this word is going to go back to the verb, lay. The baby either lay contented or contentedly. Well, in this sentence, we need an adverb to modify the verb lay, so it would be the baby lay in the carriage very contentedly. Now, in the next sentence, we've got two words that need to be chosen. The odor of burning sulfur smells real or really bad or badly. Now, let's determine what word in the sentence is being modified. The odor of burning sulfur 
smells. Now, first of all, ask the question, can burning sulfur smell? Does it have the ability to smell? Well, no, it does not. So it's the odor of burning sulfur. So we're talking about the odor. The odor smells how? In this sentence, we would say the odor of burning sulfur smells really bad. The odor of burning sulfur smells bad. An adjective. How does it smell? It smells really bad. So we have an adjective bad that is being modified by an adverb really. The odor of burning sulfur smells really bad. The nursery music played very soft or softly. What are we looking at in this sentence? Which word is being modified or explained by soft or softly. Well, in this sentence, we've got the word played. The nursery music played. So the word is going to modify played. In this sentence, we're looking for an adverb. The nursery music played very softly. And then the final example, the, this lemonade tastes too bitter or bitterly? Well, again, can lemonade taste? No. We're talking about a state of being. So this lemonade tastes too bitter or bitterly? The answer is the adjective bitter. This lemonade tastes too bitter. Turn our attention now to adverbs that modify verbs. Adverbs modify verbs most of the time. An adverb that modifies a verb can come before or after the verb it modifies. It can be in the middle of a verb phrase that it modifies, or it can be at the beginning of the sentence, nowhere near the verb it modifies. Consider these examples. Gregory often reads biographies about great Christians. The verb here is reads. To what extent, how often? Well, often. Gregory often reads. Angelica realized later that she had mailed the wrong package. So in the first example, the adverb comes before the verb. In the second example, the adverb comes after the verb. In the third example, dishonest people cannot be trusted to keep their word. The adverb actually comes in the middle of the verb phrase that it modifies. The verb phrases can be trusted. Not is the adverb that modifies that, cannot be trusted. And the last example, yesterday after the assembly, we moved the risers from the stage. Moved is the verb. Yesterday tells when this happened, so yesterday is separated from the verb. So before the verb, after the verb, in the middle of a verb phrase, or somewhere completely at a different place in the confines of the sentence. As we continue to think about adverbs that modify verbs, in order to locate these adverbs, first of all, find the verb, and then ask the questions which adverbs answer. Where, when, how, to what extent, or how often. Let's look at just a couple of simple examples here in the sentences we have. We moved the risers from the stage yesterday. Now, first of all, find the verb. In this sentence, moved 
use the verb. Now, find a word in this sentence that answers where, when, how, to what extent, or how often. Well, the word yesterday tells us when we move the risers. So yesterday is an adverb modifying the word, the verb moved. The second example, we ate dinner early. Locate the verb. Ate is the action word here. What is the word in the sentence that tells us where, when, how, to what extent, or how often we ate? Well, we ate early. It tells us when we ate. Adverbs can also modify adjectives. When adverbs modify adjectives, they're located immediately before those adjectives and usually tell how or to what extent. So again, to find adverbs that modify adjectives, first of all, find the adjective and then ask the question how or to what extent. So the sentence is, during a snowstorm, drivers should expect extremely slippery roads. Now, we're looking for a word that modifies an adjective. In this sentence, the adjective that is modifying another word is the word slippery. Slippery tells us what kind of roads. But then the word extremely tells us to what extent the roads are slippery. So slippery is an adjective and extremely is an adverb. Extremely is an adverb because it modifies the adjective slippery. It tells us to what extent the roads are slippery. Now let's practice a few of these sentences identifying adverbs that modify adjectives. The extremely fragile vase was enclosed in a glass case. Now, first of all, let's identify adjectives in this sentence. Now, in this sentence, there are two adjectives. Fragile is an adjective modifying vase, and glass is an adjective telling us what kind of case. But glass case does not have an adverb modifying it, so let's look back at the extremely fragile vase. Fragile is an adjective modifying vase, telling us what kind of vase it is. Extremely is an adverb modifying fragile, telling us how, to what extent, the vase is fragile. So, extremely is the adverb modifying fragile. Second sentence, an unusually heavy snow was forecast on the evening news. In this sentence, we have heavy modifying snow and unusually modifying heavy. So heavy is an adjective modifying snow. Unusually is an adverb modifying heavy. In the third sentence, the tiny violet is delicately beautiful. The tiny violet is beautiful. Is is a linking verb, so it's telling us that the violet is beautiful. It is in a state of being beautiful. But how beautiful? To what extent? Well, it is delicately beautiful. So beautiful is an adjective modifying violet. Delicately is an adverb modifying beautiful. Mr. Boyd's apples are slightly sour. Are is another linking verb, linking sour back to apples. It's identifying apples as being sour. But how sour are they? Well, they're slightly sour. 
So slightly is an adverb modifying the adjective sour that modifies apples. And in our last example, after the ordeal, he looked remarkably well. Now we're talking about health here. So remember when we're using the word well or good, if it is describing healthiness, then we would use the word well. And since he looked well, it means that this is his state of being. So looked here is a linking verb linking he to well. He looked well. How well did he look? He looked remarkably well. So well is an adjective modifying he. Remarkably is an adverb modifying well. Again, talking about adverbs that modify other adverbs. Adverbs will occasionally modify other adverbs, and when they do modify other adverbs, they're located immediately before and usually tell how. The pianist played unusually well. And again, well is an adverb because it modifies the verb played. Unusually is an adverb because it modifies the adverb well, telling how well the pianist played. Again, let's practice. Adverbs that modify other adverbs. She sang more beautifully than anyone I had ever heard. Sang is the verb Beautifully is an adverb telling how she sang. More beautifully is another adverb. More is an adverb modifying beautifully, an adverb telling us how beautifully she sang. Quakers were persecuted most shamefully by the Puritans. Were persecuted is a verbal phrase, and how were they persecuted? Shamefully. To what extent was the shamefulness most shameful? Quakers were persecuted most shamefully. Shamefully is an adverb modifying the verb were persecuted. Most is an adverb modifying the adverb shamefully, telling us to what extent. Jeremy can read amazingly well. Can read is the verb phrase. Jeremy can read well, an adverb modifying the verb. How well? Amazingly well. So well is an adverb modifying can read. Amazingly is an adverb modifying well. And our last example, Jason travels much farther to church than Veronica does. Travels is the verb. Jason travels farther. So farther is an adverb modifying travels. And then much is an adverb modifying farther, telling to what extent farther, much farther. So this brings to a conclusion our study on adverbs. And now we've covered uh, five different parts of speech of the eight parts of speech. And next week, we're going to turn our attention to another part of speech. But until then, uh, please pay attention to your writing assignment for this week and also to your reading assignment. And I will look forward to seeing you back next week as we continue our study of English 101.